Thank you, everybody. That was so much better than Wednesday. Um, today, well, I guess before today, I could tell we were having some trouble with solving these equations. So let's see if we can look at it from a different perspective and uh, gain some understanding there. So this is a mistake that I see quite a bit. So here's an example of that. Uh, what mistake was made, Carter? Oh, subtracted pi pitch to two. Well, you said it kind of back. You have a tendency to say these things kind of backwards. Subtract two from five x, yeah. right? Which is what should happen. Subtract two from five x. But can you like? Is this what it looks like when oh, you subtract two no. from five x? No. I know what you did. No, I mean, expound on that, Carter. You'll have fun on the next one, Robert. Uh, don't you have to minus two from? Two and then minus two from 13. Mm, let's just talk about this part of it first, because you're you guys are bringing to light some misunderstandings that I didn't think of. Don't. Okay, so you told us this before that the five x isn't the same as just the two. Now what what are these x's? And what are these two? What ones? Ones, yeah. There's two ones there, and we're subtracting two ones from five x's. Okay? And if you write it out the long way, x plus x plus x plus x, that's four. That's five x. That's as literal as I can put that, what five x means, what it is. It means add x up five times. And then if I said, try to subtract, excuse me, subtract two ones, subtract one twice. Okay. Can you take a one from an X? No. Can you take an apple from an orange? No. You can't do that. Okay. So don't. I don't like to, to just put it as uh, vaguely and, and and simply as don't combine like terms because it doesn't get at why you're not supposed to combine like terms. Okay. What's not like about them? They're just not the same thing. Ones and X's are not the same thing. Apples and oranges are not the same thing. Elephants and uh, Volkswagen Beetles are not the same thing. They're different. You can't <laughs> combine them, and you can't take one from another. Okay? Dalton? Um, can we move to the second part? In just a second. Let me just make sure. Okay? I want to remember some stuff that was said. Okay. We said subtract 2. And someone said divide by 5. Um, okay, so you could say she combined unlike terms. Apples and oranges, x's and ones, you cannot put those together. Okay, and if that's the case, then, well, that can't be where we start. We can't put the 5x and the 2 together in any way. So, Dalton, what would you have done instead? I would have done plus 2 to cancel the 2 out, and then... What do you mean by cancel this 2 out? Because it's negative 2. If you add 2 to it, it's a 0. Good. That's what we mean. That word cancel out gets used a lot for lots of different circumstances, and it gets to be confusing. It, mean, it means so many different things. So it means, in addition, land, it means you make it a 0. Yeah. yeah. And so then you add 2 to 13. Why? To even. To keep it even. Keep it even, keep it balanced. Remember, it's a scale. You do not want to get this thing out of whack by doing the one thing to one side and not to the other. I'm seeing that a lot, okay? Whatever it is you do, even if it's a wild guess, make sure to do it to both sides. You can do literally anything you want to an equation if you do it to both sides. Will it always be a good idea? No. no. But you can't no. do it. We could have... Uh, you know, simmered these over the oven in a light oil for 15 minutes. Then we do it to both sides. Okay, so we can do any wacky thing to either side that we want, as long as we do it to both sides at the same time. Okay, so negative two plus two is zero. That's good because now we have five x plus zero plus nothing. So we just have five x on that side. And what do we wind up with here? 15. 15, 13 plus two. All right, now we've done two good things. We got rid of that. Yeah. We've done to both sides, and we're ready to continue. Somebody besides Dalton want to pick it up from there? Emma? You divide by five on each side. Divide by five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
divide by 5. x equals 3. So we would add two. Now, so let's talk about, let, let's back up and, and uh, mention something that was suggested earlier. Should we subtract two? No. Can no. we subtract two? No. no. Oh, you could, but it'd be wrong. Yes, you could, but it'd be wrong. Yes. You could, yes. but you would have to do it a different way. And like, would it be wrong? No. Would it be wrong? We can do anything we want to both sides. So if I subtract two, and I subtract two from this side, is the equation wrong? No. No. The equation is still true. The equation is still balanced. If I take 2 from either side, if I add 7 to both sides, if I divide both sides by 5, whatever I do to both sides, the equation is still true. But what is negative 2 minus 2? Negative 4. So now we have an equation that's still true, but isn't any closer to being solved. No. Right? So, but we can still solve this equation, right? What would we do with this equation? Add. Add 4. And we'll wind up in the same place we did just a second ago. 5x equals 15, x equals 3. Okay. Just be careful. The, th the mistake that most people make when they subtract 2, they don't usually put negative 4, do they? They usually put 0. Or they don't write anything. They just say minus 2, and they put 0. Careful. Think about what you're doing. If it's a negative 2, you're going to want to add a 2 so you wind up with 0. You want to get a 0 there. When you're adding stuff on, the thing you'd like to be adding is 0. And so let's add 2. Or here we have a negative 4. Let's add 4 so that we get plus 0. Okay. Let's take a look at this equation. On your own, just write down what Greta has uh, done, what mistake she's done here in the blue step. First, let me remind you of something. Can this be correct? I'm reminding you of how you can determine whether or not this answer could possibly be correct. What's that? How do you know it's not correct? Besides the word being incorrect, how do you know that this couldn't be the solution to this equation? Because um, when you plug it in, it's not changing. Right. Plus 3 in there, what do we get? 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4 is 13, it's not 21. So we know that that's not the right answer. Not the solution to this equation. So what we have to do is uh, determine what did Greta do wrong. It certainly feels right, and I know it feels right to some of you because some of you are doing this. Dalton? She divided first. Okay, she divided first. Is dividing first the wrong thing? Yes. No. Can't we do this, whatever we want, to both sides of the equation? Yeah, but she yeah. divides by the x, or whatever, the x. She divided by 3. What do you mean? She's supposed to, like, minus 4. Side. That's what I would do first. That's what I'd recommend that you do first. But can you divide both sides by 3? Yeah. Yes. yes, you can do anything you want on both sides. As long as you do it on both sides, you can do anything. So she must have divided by three incorrectly. Okay? Yeah, she did because she went well wrong in my mind. There's gotta be a way to do this correctly because you can do whatever you want to both sides as long as you do it to both sides. Oh okay. right? It's down yeah, <coughs> then she did x plus four equals seven, but then she had to put negative four minus four. It should be like four x. No, it should be 3x. No, 4x is 4 times x. This is just x plus 4. So x plus 4 is not the same as 4 times x. And you can't do that. You can't say x plus 4 is 4x. No, they have to do it again. No, maybe not. Here's the problem. He forgot to Think about, four if, I, if I have enough of these pieces, I'll, I'll, I'll show you on um, this scale what it looks like, and then I'll hold it. It's not going to be equal on both sides. We're going to have to pretend. Uh, Four. Oh gosh, I don't know if I have 21 of those things. Okay. And again, we're going to have to pretend like these are balanced. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 21. Okay, uh, 
so now that we look at what we have, 3x and 4 more, yes, and on this side are 21, are those little white tokens. If I were to divide this side by 3, that means I want to, to leave one third of this side, right? I'm going to leave one third of this side. Let's look at what it looks like on the other side. That's a little easier. There's 21 of these. So if I divide this by 3, how many will I have? Seven. 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 Okay, so I'll show you seven, of course. Now it's going to be off balance. Now I have a thing of five and two more. That's seven. Okay, so it's off balance because I've not divided by three on both sides, right? Correct. So let's see what it looks like to divide by three on this side. Well, I've got two different kinds of things. What two different kinds of things do I have? Ones and X's. Ones and X's. So if I look at the X's, can I look at a third of this group of X's? What would be a third of this group of X's? Uh, one X. One of those X's. So, okay, so one of those X's. But, have I taken a third of this side? No. no. You only took like a half of a third because you still need to take some white things off. Right. The white things are all there. We haven't looked at a third of the X's. Or sorry, a third of the ones. We're divided by three, so we divide four by three. Four by three, the would equal decimal. Right. Sometimes it works okay, and sometimes it doesn't. And that's why it's not wrong to divide by three first, but it is messier, more difficult, and I wouldn't recommend it. Okay? Because how do I take a third of these four things? Is it possible? Yeah. Theoretically possible, like, uh, well, there's four of them, so I know it's one and some more, right? Like if it was three, it would be straight one. So then, but this remainder one, right? I'd have to divide into the three pieces. I'd have to, I, don't, I can't do that. I don't want to cut this into pieces. But I can take a third of this and put it there, right? One and a third. Well, that's just a mess. Why is that side still heavier? Because I haven't completed the dividing by three. And I can't even, I, I'll try and let this one third of the chip rest on this side. And OK, now they're even, OK? But I'd have to have a third of a chip to, to put right there. I don't have. You're holding your finger on it. I'm having to because the like, whoa, <laughs> these guys, you know, they're probably not the correct number for X. You see what I mean? I can't just throw random things on there and have it balance out just because I want to. Because this actually is. So back to the equation. This is why we have equations because we don't have the time to be setting up these silly things with scales. X is what it needs to be. If I'm going to divide this side by 3, I need to divide the entire side by 3, including four. these 4. So this becomes 4 thirds, and now we see what a mess it can become. Okay. So now I have x plus 4 thirds, and that makes sense. 3x divided by 3, that's just 1x. And now 4 divided by 3, that's 4 thirds, or 1 and a third. So now I have x plus 4 thirds equals 7. The other side was fine. I divided 21 by 3, I got 7. So now that I have x plus 4 thirds, how would we proceed solving for x in this equation? x plus 4 thirds. How do I not have 4 thirds on the left side? Tiana? You could, yeah. Nope. I want to know how to not have 4 thirds on this side. Minus four thirds, right? As messy as it is, it's pretty simple. So let's get a zero still. Plus four thirds minus four thirds is zero. Same idea as uh, our work back here. Let's subtract four from negative, or add four to negative four, and we'll wind up with a zero. Let's get a zero here. Subtract four thirds. Subtract four thirds. But now we have to take seven and subtract four thirds. How do we subtract four thirds from seven? Um, put a one under the seven. And? And then subtract, or wait, each common one common denominator. Common denominator, right? These are ones and these are thirds. They're not the same. You have to make them the same. I can make these thirds. I just gonna, I'm just going to have a bunch of them. I'm going to have 21 thirds. 21 thirds minus four thirds? Negative 17. 17. No, it's positive 21 minus 4, so it's just 17. Yeah. 17 thirds. Okay, what a mess. That would make. Then you could divide 13 by. Like, well, I wouldn't do it that way. I just wouldn't do it that way. I'm showing you that the person who's trying to divide by 3 there, 
He's mistaken about what that looks like. What I would do first is what everybody has already suggested. Subtract 4 first. <coughs> 3x equals 17. Now, come up. Divide by 3 on both sides. 3 on both sides. That's clear. 3. x equals 17 thirds. And it's not a great number. It's not a pretty answer. It was a heck of a lot easier to figure out that the answer was 17 thirds this way than it was that way. 5 and 2 thirds. 5 and 2 thirds, huh? Can it be 5.6 with you? Sure. Why are you, yeah, why do you need something to love it? Because I'm not afraid of fractions. I just leave it as a fraction. It doesn't intimidate <laughs> I don't like fractions. I don't either. I'm scared of them. Shapes. Huh? shapes and fractions confuse me. Well, fractions. I guess the best thing to do is avoid them for the rest of your life. Well, well everything's a shape shape. It's like a horror like film. A, hero it's a, or a square is a shape. It's the right time of year. Horror films are coming out right now, close to Halloween. Stand there and look scared. You could be like, cut your toe off with seven eighths of Mr. Story. You can't be scared for love. Wow. <laughs> what? All right, so those are two really common things that I see. Uh, dividing by three too soon, not because it's, it's wrong to divide by three, sooner than I would recommend. It's just. You don't realize that dividing by three, you don't get to just cancel this three and get x plus four. You have to have a third of the four as well. You have to have a third of everything that's on that side. Okay? Oh, I did all that and I went through all that detail to try and make a point that hopefully you'll remember and will stick with you. Jason? Oh, never mind. Okay. All right. Now, I want to help you maybe solidify this through a little thing that I think is kind of fun. Let's start with, uh, can we hit the lights so we can see this a little better? It's a Minecraft chest. It is a Minecraft chest. Oh, I have an iron gold in the backpack. Is it 20 bucks? Minecraft? Well, thanks. I have an iron gold in my backpack. Okay. Okay, so there's a number inside this box. Seven. I don't want people to give away the answer. That doesn't help anybody. Okay. Uh, Let's see, so there's a number in this chest. If you subtract 24 from this number, you get 18. If you subtract 24 from the number in this box, you get 18, okay? On, yeah, on your own, on your own. Nobody needs the answer given to them. That's not gonna help them on a quest. So to think about this situation, figure out what number is in there. Is there a story mode for Minecraft where you do go on a phone? Brandon? Well, yeah, because yeah, it's not. Say. Nope. Oh. Everybody on your own, figure out what number oh. is in that chest. Oh. Yeah, it's new. Oh, I got it. Starting to get unruly here. Okay. What number is in the chest? Six. Six. 44. 42. 42. 42. It's 42. 42. Yeah. It's not 44. No. It's not 6. No. Yeah. It's six. This number is 42. We're subtracting 24 from, not from, we're not subtracting 18 from 24. We're subtracting 24 from this number and getting 18. Yeah. It's 6. It's 6. 6. Yeah, Minus 24 is 18. X yeah. minus 24 no. is not no. 18. No, but if we're subtract 24, it would be 24 plus. 6 minus 24. Oh, okay. Negative 18. I get it. It would be 24 plus 18. Let's see. No. What number is it? 42. 42. Woo! 42. Oh, no. Woo, that's wrong. Okay. Right. Can you say this? Since we're trying to fix the. No, we don't need to worry about who's wrong. You know, worry about us being correct. Now listen, let's use algebra, write a simple, simple equation that says all this, without all the big pictures and all that kind of stuff, okay? So, there's a number in this chest and we don't know what it is, so what do we call that? X. X. Equation. Okay. 
back of the room. What do we do to this number in the chest? This subtract 24. Subtract 24. And you get 18. What did you do to figure out what this number was? 24. You added 24. Added 24. Probably, well, you maybe set up an equation. That'd be fantastic. If you didn't, in your head, you said, well, it's 18. I subtracted 24 to get here. So I should add 24 to get back up to where it started, right? Yeah. That's another kind of a way to think of why we would add 24 to both sides. If I, I kind of cancel out the subtraction of 24, right, to figure out what that number was to start with, so there it is, 42. Let's try again. Here's a number in this chest. Add 32 to this number, you get the number 95. Don't shout out the answer. Just figure out what the number in the chest is. I can do If you feel up to it, try writing an equation that says the same thing as this whole sentence and solving it to find the number in the box. Brandon, what do you say the number is? 63. 63. Okay, so let's go back. Um, so let's go back and, and write an equation that says the exact same thing. Okay, Tiana? 32 plus x 30 equals close. 95. Sorry. Oh. 32 plus x equals 95. Agreed? I mean, I like three x plus thirty two. Does it matter? No, no. But yeah, what? Well, yeah, could yeah. absolutely it could. Sarah. I did ninety five minus thirty two equals x. Yes. Oh, ninety five minus thirty two equals x. That's certainly an equation. That's yeah. I'm trying to state it in a way that like where we we see an algebra because we don't normally see an equation like this. Right? It'd be equals question mark. Yeah. And this is like uh, the way algebra was stated early on, like the early, early grades, right? Take 95 and subtract 32 and get an answer, right? But this is about as basic as it gets in our introduction to algebra, right? You want to start basic? Yeah, it was. So, the same thing that you did logically in your heads to, you know, if I add 32 to this number, I get 95. So it must be some number that's like lower than 95, right? So I'll add 35, or um, <coughs> subtract 32 from 95. And that'll tell me what the number is. Okay, let's keep it going. Remember the chest, if you multiply this number by 5, you get 95. Okay, mm -hmm. on your papers, please. Card. Uh, 5x equals 95. Okay, so you don't have to tell yourself this little story every time you see an equation, but it is what it's saying. It's saying there's some mystery number. You multiply it by 5, you get 95. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we solve this equation. Tell me the equation. Oh, the equation is 7 times x okay. equals 63. Okay, let's look at it even like this. 7 times this thing, right, equals 63. 63. Now, in algebra, do we draw a box every time? No. So no. Now we use the letter x or, or any letter we want. Some letters we wouldn't probably want to use because they look like numbers. O, probably stay away from that one. P, P. 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 
Q, maybe? Oh, Q hangs below. Anyway, Hi. 7 times something equals 63, right? So our number must be 1 seventh of 63. So 9 is what is in the box. Nine. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. I didn't want this one. What did that happen? This. So there's a number in this chest. If you divide this number by 8, you get 5. If you divide this number by 8, you get 5. Write the equation and solve the equation. Look for somebody new here to tell me what equation to write. Somebody I haven't heard from yet. Oh, yeah. Everybody whose hand I see I've already heard from. Aubrey? Yeah. Mm. Equals what? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So you have this box is a standard for X. X is, well, a better standard for this box. It represents this box. This is a good equation. How do we solve this equation? This number, this number 12, is the result of taking our number and dividing by 4. So this number must be pretty big, because it gets divided by 4, and, well, 12 is kind of a big number, especially when you consider it's only one-fourth of this number, so it's going to be quite big. So we would multiply by 4. Okay. The thing I'm trying to get, you can see kind of in a common sense way, I want to help you see why we're doing what we do on the left side, because... 4 divided by 4 is 1, and now I just, what, I have 1x here. And what is 12 times 4? 48. 48, so the number of the box must be 48. It's 48. Say we took x over 7 equals uh, 21, okay? And I saw someone do um, divide by 7. No. X equals 3. No. Emma, what's the mistake there? You don't divide, you multiply by 7. Okay. And I want, it helps if you think about what's going on with these numbers rather than just seeing them as symbols and what step you're supposed to do next. Okay. See how someone can get confused and think, oh, I'll divide by 7 here. But dividing by 7 uh, does not reveal what this number is, right? This number is divided by 7, and you get 21. So this number must be quite large, right? Quite a big number to be divided by 7 and get 21. So we should instead do what? Multiply by 7 on both sides. And what's 21 times 7? 147. 20, 40, 147. 147. Very good. Okay. Now, here's to help you a little bit with the equations we saw in the class. So if you add 23 to this number in the box, you get 48. So what must that number 25. be? 25. 25? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's what happens when you open this box. There's another box inside. And we know we're correct there, 25, okay? So if you multiply the number in this box by 5, you get 25, so it must be 5, okay? Here's what that equation looks like, all right? If you add 23 to some number, you get 48. So we subtracted 23, and we found that it was 25, it turns out that that wasn't the number, it was actually 9. the number we actually wanted to find, times 5. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to see is that this 5x is a, it's like a variable itself. You don't want to go messing with it too much, that's probably the most difficult way to go. If I can see this 5x as a unit, like locked up in a box together, okay? And this is plus 23, there's a number plus 23 gives me 48, okay? 
if I can see this is kind of locked up together, maybe at that point I'll choose to subtract 23 from both sides, which is what I would recommend, right? Some number plus 23 equals 48, well, we'll just figure out what that number would have to be, okay? But that number is 25. But that's actually the result of taking our number and multiplying by 5, then we get 25 out of it. We divide by 5. X equals 5. Think of this as kind of together. It's a, it's a number. This is a number. We've added 23 to it and gotten 48. So let's start by figuring out what this number is. And then we can figure out what that number is. Let's try this again. If you subtract 13, we're going to try it again. Then you're going to write the same kind of an equation that I just wrote. If you subtract 13 from this number, you get 20. 33, okay? So we can look at it as uh, some number, right? What is it? We subtract 13 and we get? 20. 20. We would add 13 to both sides to figure out it's 33, right? But then it turns out that number, it's not as simple as x this time. It's, it itself is the result of multiplying some number by another number. 11. 11. So if you multiply the number in this box, you will get 33. So if I multiply this, now this is the most inside box. If I multiply by 3, I'll get 33. I know that because I added 13 to both sides in the step previous to this. 33. X equals 11 because we divide by 3 on both sides. There's the equation right there. Some number minus 13 equals 20. I want you. What I'm trying to get you to do is see this as this whole thing as some number. Okay. And then, oh, there's some number kind of in that number that I want to get to after that. Okay. Trying to keep you away from one of the mistakes being dividing by three at the beginning. Okay. It's not wrong to divide by three, but we talked about how it can get very complicated and fractiony. And we have to mess with those fractions throughout the problem. Instead of that, view this as a number, okay? Get it by itself, and then get that guy right there by itself. Right. Um, one more time. If you add 7 to the number in this box, you get 31. So, some number plus 7 equals 31. Okay, I'll subtract 7, subtract 7. This number is 24. Okay. It turns out that number is a number being multiplied by negative 4. So negative 4 six. times x is equal to 24. We divide by negative 4 on both sides. Negative 6 